Welcome to worship at Zion Lutheran Church in Buffalo, Minnesota. We are so glad that you have joined us. We just have a few announcements before we get started with worship this morning. Um, the Renewing Our House for Worship project in the sanctuary is moving forward. The carpet just started going in, and the pews will be next to go back in. So there's lots of changes happening. You can get some updates in the weekly emails if you're signed up for those. You can also check out the Facebook page where there are lots of great photos to see the transformation as it is happening. Um, we'd love for people to be helping out with some of the projects that are coming up. So if you go to zionbuffalo.org, backslash serve, you can see a list of projects and things we need volunteers for. Um, there's some things happening next week, this in the couple, next couple of days. The Women's Ministry has a Bible study that's meeting at Zion in person on Tuesday at 1.30, so women are welcome to join. Um, and we also have a youth movie night that is happening on Wednesday evening. Uh, at 8.30, we hope that especially 8th graders will come and be welcomed by the high schoolers for an ice cream social. And then we'll start the movie at 9. We're starting a little late to make sure it's dark enough to see the movie. So we'll be watching the movie Grown Up starting at 9. So uh, graduating 8th graders and high school youth are welcome to join. We would love to see you. So now please uh, give a sign of peace and share Christ's love with those who are worshiping with you and know that we share that love with you also and we are so glad to have you with us. Welcome to worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help, help us. us. It, is it is hard to believe there is enough to share. We, we question your ways, ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We, we turn, turn to our, to our own, own understanding rather than trusting in you. 
We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished by Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you are the tree of life. 
offering shelter to all the world. Graft us into yourself and nurture our growth, that we may bear your truth and love to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please join in reading Psalm 92. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High. Sing to herald your love in the morning, morning and, your and your faithfulness at night. night. On the psaltery and on the lyre, and to the melody of the harp. For you have made me glad by your acts, O Lord, and I shout for joy because of the works of your hands. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree and shall spread abroad like a cedar of Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be green and succulent. That they may show how upright the Lord is, my rock in whom there is no injustice. Hi, kids. Welcome to our children's message today. I have with me an apple. And in the stories that um, Bristol's going to read, stories that Jesus told, um, he talks about the kingdom of God like a seed that's planted and then grows up. And that's kind of like an apple. So the kingdom of God is kind of like an apple. There are little seeds inside of this apple. And this apple at one time was just a seed. And then it was put into the ground. And it grew into a big tree. And then that tree produced this apple. And that tree produced lots and lots and lots of apples. And Jesus' passage of uh, Jesus' story that he tells in our scripture reading for today um, talks about the kingdom of God is like is like a seed that's planted. And we can also talk about the kingdom of God as an apple or like baptism. So in baptism, God's word is planted into our hearts and into our lives like a seed is planted into the ground. And in baptism, the word, God's promise planted in our lives, is supposed to grow up, kind of like a seed turning into a tree and then producing apples or corn, producing ears of corn and lots and lots of kernels or all sorts of things. God's kingdom is one that grows it grows in our hearts and minds and in our lives, and it grows in the world as well. So when you think about the kingdom of God, you can think about a seed being planted and baptism as a seed being planted, and it's going to grow. Let's pray. Would you repeat after me? Dear God, Thank you for your kingdom and your kingdom in our hearts and minds. We pray that our hearts and minds would be good soil for your kingdom to grow. We pray that our lives could produce the fruit of your kingdom in this world. We pray in Jesus' name. And all together God's people say, Amen.
Our gospel today comes from Mark chapter 4. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter some seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. Jesus also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. Yet, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nest in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. He did not speak to them except in parables. Parables are these short, puzzling little stories. They're full of metaphor and mystery. They defy easy or straightforward explanation. They often leave listeners saying, what does this really mean? And it seems that much of the time, that's actually the point. Jesus loved using parables to teach. He often used them to describe what God is like or what the kingdom of God is like. There are a number of parables throughout the Gospels. As we just heard, this text in Mark says that Jesus never taught without parables, and they usually got exactly that reaction. What does this really mean? Sometimes Jesus' closest disciples were so perplexed, they pressured him to give them the real meaning in private. They pretended to understand the parable in front of crowds, but then later they weren't so sure they'd gotten the point. But Jesus isn't teaching in parables because he wants to confuse minds. Jesus is teaching in parables because he wants to expand imagination. Jesus doesn't want his listeners to walk away and think, oh, okay, I've got it. I know exactly what the kingdom of God is and isn't. He wants them to keep thinking about what he said, to keep wondering about it, to keep asking questions about it and digging deeper. Jesus' parables almost always focused on ordinary people, farmers and fathers, widows and workers, and they almost always focused on ordinary things, bread, candles, seeds, coins, when we hear the word kingdom, the images that come to mind might be of palaces and fountains and gold. But when Jesus speaks about the kingdom of God, he uses very different imagery. Jesus talks about fresh bread and warm spices, nesting birds, fertile soil. The kingdom of God isn't opulent or fancy. It's ordinary and accessible. Jesus' listeners would almost certainly catch glimpses of the things that Jesus talked about in his parables as they went about their everyday lives, when they weighed flour for baking, when they tended their gardens, when they went to a family wedding, when they cleaned their houses. And those small moments would spark recognition. Oh yes, I remember Jesus said the kingdom of God was like a fig tree. Oh yes, Jesus said the kingdom of God is like a pinch of yeast. And then perhaps they would wonder anew, what does that really mean? There's always another layer of meaning to discover in a parable. So today we're going to wonder together, what do these parables that we just heard really mean what layer of meaning might we discover today? But to discover a new layer of meaning in these particular parables, some of you are going to have to forget what you already know. I know that a lot of you are farmers and gardeners, so when you hear a story about sowing seed, 
you actually have some technical agricultural knowledge to bring to the subject. But technical knowledge is never the point of a parable. Not to mention, in this story, the farmer haphazardly scatters some seed, then, considering the job done, sleeps away the rest of the growing season. You don't need very much agricultural expertise to know that that's not going to be a very effective technique. But as it turns out, the farmer's neglect is actually the point in this parable. This story isn't about the sower's skill at all. It's about the mystery and beauty of growth that happens deep in the ground. A seed opening up in the soil, unassisted and unseen, reaching its roots down to nourishment and its leaves to the sun. That transformation happens even while the farmer sleeps. Because that growth, it isn't human work, It's God's work. God created this marvelous and miraculous world in which seeds can unfold like treasure hidden in the soil, in which something so small can grow into something more than it started as. Just imagine, Jesus says, the kingdom of God is like that, a powerful transformation that God brings about when we're not even looking. This is how Jesus talks about God's activity and presence in the world, especially in the Gospel of Mark. The kingdom of God is always a hidden mystery, an unexpected surprise. It's all around us right now, but it's hard to pin down. You have to be paying attention to catch it. You have to have eyes to see and ears to hear. It's actually John the Baptist who first mentions the kingdom of God at the very beginning of the Gospel of Mark when he proclaims in a prophetic voice, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. When Jesus arrives on the scene, he picks up on the same theme and he too starts talking about the kingdom of God. He literally tells his disciples that it's a secret. Jesus says in Mark 4, To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God, but for those outside, everything comes in parables. So that brings us back to parables. The secret of the kingdom of God is wrapped in the puzzle of a parable, layers and layers of mystery and meaning. Well, here's one more layer we should unpack about this parable of the seeds. Jesus teaches that the kingdom of God is like something tiny that grows into something big, like tiny seeds that become sheaves of wheat or a mustard shrub. Notice that what the seeds grow into are valuable and useful plants. That grain that grows from the seed that the clumsy farmer sowed that won't just feed him, it will feed his whole family. Perhaps he'll have enough crop left over that he can give or sell some to others and it will feed a whole community. And the second image that Jesus uses, the mustard seed, it's the same. It begins as this tiny speck, but it grows into a sprawling shrub. And that shrub provides a home for birds and critters who need its safety. That shrub will produce more seeds that can be ground into spice or pressed into oil, adding flavor and nutrition to food. Just imagine, Jesus says, the kingdom of God is like that. It may start tiny and unimpressive, but it grows into something beautiful and beneficial. So, do you have eyes to see it? Are you catching glimpses of God's kingdom all around you, starting small but growing into something beautiful and beneficial? We know this kind of growth in our lives. We've experienced things like this. An awkward first date that grows into a lasting partnership and a loving family. A single idea that grows into a mission venture on the other side of the world. 
a small act of courage that grows into a culture-changing social movement, a simple invitation to worship that grows into conversion to lifelong faith. What if these were the ordinary experiences that sparked your recognition? Oh yes, Jesus said that God's presence would be like this, something amazing growing from something seemingly insignificant. What if these experiences made you pause and say, God is here, God is at work in this? You know, those moments when you think to yourself, there's something more than meets the eye here. Those Holy Spirit moments when you know that God is present. Don't miss those moments. Remember that John the Baptist said the kingdom of God has come near. It's all around you already. It's already here, already happening. Pay attention to it. Remember that Jesus said the kingdom of God is like a hidden secret. You have to know where to look. You have to keep your eyes and your ears and your hearts open. You have to be willing to be surprised because, remember, the kingdom isn't about what humans are up to. It's about what God is up to. And God is often up to the unexpected. God is often using forgotten people and unlikely situations to change the world. People like David, the scrawny shepherd boy, the youngest and least important son of Jesse, who became Israel's greatest king. Or people like Mary, the young, unwed woman from the forgotten corner of the empire who became the mother of God's own son. When you are looking for God's activity in the world, don't look to the center. Look to the margins. Don't look for it in the extraordinary. Look for it in ordinary things. That's why Lutherans use things like water and bread and wine as the center of our most holy rituals, baptism and communion. Because those were the things that Jesus used and taught about. The Protestant reformers like Martin Luther used to say, the finite can hold the infinite. In Jesus Christ, we saw that mortal human flesh could hold the very person of God. So it should be no surprise that simple things like water and bread and wine can still bear the presence of God to us. Small, simple things can have a big impact. A small seed can grow into a towering tree. A small candle can light an entire room. A small bit of yeast can leaven a whole batch of dough. And God can be born as a tiny, vulnerable baby. So this week, as you go through your daily life, look for the holy all around you. See what reminds you of these parables about seeds, what reminds you of what the kingdom of God is like. And when you see glimpses of it, when you notice yourself thinking, oh, There is God's presence. Offer a prayer of thanks and praise for small things that can change the world. Let's offer one of those prayers right now. Holy God, your kingdom is here all around us right now. We give you thanks for the small seeds that you plant in our lives. May they grow into the goodness that you intend. Remind us to pay attention, to notice where you are at work in our world in unexpected ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
let us join our voices with Christians throughout the world in affirming our faith today in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. Good and gracious God, you plant the seeds of faith in each of your children. Open our ears to hear the good news and enliven your church across the globe so that your kingdom of grace and mercy may take root, grow and flourish in all times and all places. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. O oh God, we pray for the leaders of all types in this and every nation. Grant them wisdom and humility to dedicate themselves to cooperation, equity, and justice, that peace would overcome hostility and love would overcome hatred. Tear down barriers that separate us from our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Divine Comforter, you show compassion to those in need and provide relief to those who call on you. Bless all who are broken in body, mind, or spirit, especially those marginalized or silenced, hungry or homeless, lonely or grieving losses of any sort. Send us from this place to be ministers of your caring presence to those we meet each day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace through Jesus Christ, our Lord who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the benediction, the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us. Be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now we go from where we are into this day that the Lord has made, and with all we are and all we do, we will we trust, trust, live, and serve Christ Jesus our Lord.